Welcome to The Do Zone, where entrepreneurs go to get things done. I'm your host, Josh Thomas. You can find me on all social media at JT Literally. Each week, I bring on experts from a variety of backgrounds to share their secrets on how to optimize performance so you can take massive action and crush your goals. Speaking of optimizing performance, we now have trained AI sales and support agents ready to help you close more deals, reduce expenses, and free up your time for higher value tasks. To learn more, go to Anabots. Dot AI. That's anabots.ai. Today's guest is Ryan Healy. Ryan's journey unfolds from his collegiate baseball career at the University of Oregon to a remarkable nine-year professional stint. Drafted by the Oakland Athletics in 2013, Ryan made his major league debut in July of 2016, marking the beginning of an impactful career with the A's. After a successful tenure, he transitioned to the Seattle Mariners in the fall of 2017, reaching two full seasons in the Pacific Northwest. In 2020, Ryan signed with the Milwaukee Brewers, culminating in a thrilling experience of playoff baseball during the wildcard game against the Dodgers. His international debut came in 2021 when he joined the KBO's Hanwha Eagles, residing in Daejeon, South Korea with his wife active real estate investor, small business owner, and a personal hitting and mental performance coach, Ryan Healy. Tell us one thing that you believe is the key to getting stuff done that most people wouldn't think of. So I have two parts to this. So for me, it's the schedule, it's the structure. It's the things that I learned, the discipline in baseball. I have to draw out what my ideal day looks like from 5 a.m. until 10 p.m. That's about as efficient as I can be anywhere from scheduling my workouts to my family time. And I need to make sure that I'm time blocking. And more importantly, I have to make sure that I am tracking these routines and these habits in my habit tracker app to make sure that I am living up to the standard that I want to live by. I have to be very diligent and very organized with my time to make sure that I'm maximizing my efficiency with this because I do have two young children that are under the age of two years old. And I want to make sure that I'm present with them um, I, I would say the combination of that is really what makes me who I am at this point. I love that. And it's so important to track, first of all, to make a plan. Second of all, to actually track your time and make sure that you're optimizing your performance in every possible way. And so could you talk a little bit more about that? Because there's a difference between somebody who is playing a sport or performing an activity at the highest possible elite level like yourself there's there's this threshold you have to cross where everybody around you is really freaking good. And being really freaking good is not enough. You got to take that extra step. You got to go to that next level. You got to track that minuscule thing to get 1% better every single time. Tell me how you do that. Amen to that. I think for me, the the success cycle that I have that I try to live by, it is prepare, perform, reflect. Everyone loves to perform. That's the most fun part of the cycle. Some people like to per, uh, to prepare a little bit. Nobody likes to reflect on what they did or how they did it. That's just the bottom line. Nobody <laughs> wants to face the realities of how they executed the task that they were trying to accomplish or their day that they just lived. And I'd be lying to you if I said that I did these things perfectly. And quite frankly, I spent about a year of my life, a year and a half of my life from retiring from baseball, almost getting back to this journey. I think you almost lose yourself when you lose a piece of your identity and have to refine it. And that's what entrepreneurship has kind of done for me is it's allowed me to redefine my identity and then restructure my purpose and why I'm doing it. But I, I love the, the preparation is probably my favorite stage of this. And obviously the performing is what I did for so many years in the baseball field. And it's something that I've gotten back to a lot is just reflecting. And it can be as simple as just, I like to write down three things that really stood out to me that I did well during that day. And then one thing that I thought that I could have done better at, it's holding myself accountable. It's tracking the success and then also the things that could have been better. And it allows me to close that day and start my preparation for the next day. So I can have a plan. I can wake up, I can execute that plan. And then I can reflect on it later that night. Yeah. And I'm curious about this uh, as somebody who performs so much. And um, it, for me personally, the preparation part of it is pretty fun. Uh, the reflection part of it is like, not so fun, but I'll do it. And sometimes I get to this point to where I've spent so much time and energy and effort preparing that the performance is almost, it's either autonomous or it's like, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever I do. What matters is that I prepared for it. Have you, have you kind of noticed that as well? hundred percent. I think everyone throughout the course of their day, they have high stress 
decisions that they have to make or they have problems thrown in their face, whether it's an employee or someone sending an email or, or making a phone call. A lot of people like to function off of, a, off of a problem, but they don't like to bring the solutions with the problem. So that's where some of the, the structure is, is challenging. I, I'm a solution-oriented person, and I have to make sure that I'm preparing for different variables throughout the course of my day. And I also like to set some foundations when I'm planning out what does my ideal day look like. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a ton of low-stress decisions in there so that my body can almost uh, or, um, operate on autopilot for a large bulk of it. So when I do get to some of those adverse moments, I'm not caught off guard and I have a little bit extra energy stored to be able to overcome those challenges and more importantly, help someone learn a lesson in the process. Or more importantly, I can learn a lesson in the process. I always love that. I don't know all the answers. So if I don't, now I get to go find the answer and we get to learn something together. Yeah, and and I have a I have a painful admission about prepare, perform, and reflect. Uh, just uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, I had a sales call for uh, one of these organizations that I that I work with, uh, and I was running the sales call, and I've done thousands of them, and I'm okay, you know, like it just just like uh, you you get a guy out there if you swing a bat ten thousand times, you kind of know how to swing a bat, you know, <laughs> even if you haven't had a ton of training. And so, you know, I've, I've swung that bat thousands and thousands of times and I'm all right, but man, I got to tell you, I blew it. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> blew this call. It was 100% my fault. And, you know, I'm taking a walk later with the lady and we're talking about it. And I'm like, man, I blew that call. And she said, you think it'd be, uh, you think you would learn something from it if you went back and listened to the recording? And I'm like, no, do I want to do that to myself. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds so painful, <laughs> but, but she's right. You know, like I can go like, but it was still fresh in my mind. Like, oh no, I know exactly what happened, but that reflection period, it sucks. That's why people avoid it. But that's the thing that you apply that feedback and you go and you get it better that next time. Like I know exactly what I did and I knew exactly like, I don't know why I had, I did it, but I knew exactly what I did. And I know next time I have that conversation, don't go there, bro. <laughs> it happens. And that's part of it. And I think the the biggest piece that I noticed from your statement there, Josh, and the story to share, and I, I appreciate the vulnerability. I mean, that's what these podcasts should be for. It's not all roses and daisies and we are alphas and we are right. Like it's not, it's not life. It's not entrepreneurship, but your ability to take accountability for that mistake that you made right there is the reason why you are successful to this point. And so many people currently in our society don't want to take accountability for anything, whether it was actually their fault or it was someone else that works with them. Yeah. Once you can take ownership for something, a mistake, it now allows the group to move forward and learn together. Whereas if we just sit there and point the fingers, we're going to spend the rest of the day finding a reason and validating why those reasons might make sense. And it's just going to be a whole lot of waste of our time. Indeed. And so I'm curious, Ryan, tell me a little bit more about some of the some of the lessons that you've learned in, in doing one thing at the highest possible level, transferring that over into running a business and investing in real estate and helping people get their minds right. What would be, you know, one or two kind of key elements that that you pulled, maybe, maybe a lesson you learned from one coach that you had that just said this one thing that blew you away? I'm putting you on the spot. So <laughs> no, it's fine. And I, I think the biggest piece that I learned from baseball was was kind of failure and you're gonna fail. And only you can determine what level your failure is. And are you calling it failing and losing or are you calling it learning? And I think that there's a large gap between those two analogies and trying to figure out which one's more applicable and then how can I apply that to my future is a really important step. And you know, Josh, I'll sit here and I'll tell you this as a man. I, I I do not have multiple seven figure businesses. I am not dominating the entrepreneur space. I am dominating things within my control and trying to stack those wins. Um, there's a lot of things that are challenging for me, especially with how many things I have happening at one time as I sent you my bio. My entire identity was baseball for 30 years of my life. And it was really simple because every decision that I made and every single day was surrounding, is this making me a better baseball player for the next season or the next game? I have a whole lot more decisions that I have to make. And there's a whole lot more people that can be affected by those decisions, whether it's borrowing private money from a friend of mine to fund the last real estate transaction, or that's the employees that I have that are running one of my businesses for me, whatever it might be. Um, it's not perfect. And I'm not afraid to fail forward because every time that I've done that, I've succeeded and I've learned and I've gotten better because of that. 
And the second piece is as an entrepreneur, we like to work 24 seven. I've had to learn how to accept the fact that there will always be more work to be done, but there are things that are more important than work. My family time, I have to make sure that I am 110% present for them when I have that time available in my schedule. And more importantly, I have to schedule my time with them so that I can make sure I don't have other distractions popping in there. Because the young children, if they don't get your 100% attention, my daughter will hit me. Um, she's two years old. So it's just like, it's not like vicious. It's just like how she communicates. She'll, she'll literally whack me. And it's like, oops, okay, let me toss my phone real quick. I have to take off this freaking Apple watch at some point in the day too as I'm getting notifications of my son who is on nap strike, it's just removing some of those or implementing some of those boundaries and barriers that can allow people to access me in that moment is really important for me with the family life. Yeah, strong. And and another thing, uh, and I, I hate to keep going back to baseball. I know that you're transitioning out of it. Please do. You see the jerseys behind me. I mean, it's kind of yeah, me, you know. There's 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 so much to learn from this, especially this is this is a an audience of entrepreneurs. And some of us have been entrepreneurs for decades. Some of us have been entrepreneurs for six months. Some of us have been working a job our entire lives and decided to strike out on our own. And we've had a little bit of marginal success and and we're hitting a wall. And uh, one thing that's always stood out to me, and I'm I'm no I I, I played baseball for nine years, um, but it was a little league, so <laughs> <laughs> totally different, right? And it took me nine years to figure out I wasn't even any good. Um, <laughs> but what uh, I I lived behind this this baseball field, and there was a um, like one of those high school uh, prep leagues. Um, mm -hmm. like the guys that are trying to get scholarships to college, like the, the kids, eighth graders, you know, and there was this prep, uh, development team. And I watched them one time and it was, you know, five guys playing shortstop and just one after another, they pick the ball up, they throw it to first, they pick the ball up, they throw it to first. And that's, that's what they did for like an hour, you yeah. know, they didn't do anything else, but just did that. And that's something that I think is lost on business owners and entrepreneurs is this is one fundamental step you're probably going to have to take 20 times per game. Let's go ahead and make that automatic. Could you just talk about the idea of making things automatic when you're playing a sport at that level and, and relate? I don't know what position you play, what position you play and what are the things that you had to practice over and over until they were automatic. I think that's the biggest difference we talk about in, in professional sports is the difference between a professional and amateur is an amateur does it till they get it right. A professional does it till they can't get it wrong. It's the same thing in business. I have to find out what my, my KPIs are, what are the most important things that I have to do, and I have to hammer those every single day. I have to repeat that process. Same thing for baseball. I, honest to God, like it was a year round job. Like we would play eight months out of the year. It'd be two months of spring training and then six months of season. And then we would have four months off. Off for me though, was like, I would take maybe three to four weeks off entirely and travel. And then it was four to six hour days of training. And it would be two hours of weight training. It would be an hour of, of speed and agility. It would be an hour of defense, and then maybe an hour or two of hitting. And it was the most meticulous task that you could ever do in your entire life. But baseball is a game of details. It's a game of inches. I've learned to become obsessed with the details because when you're able to perfect a detail, the overall image and perception of the larger picture just changes immediately. And that's what people don't really understand is like what you talked about the entrepreneurs, they're running into a wall. Usually if you're running into a wall, that tells me that you're missing small details because there's little things that you can do that will help get you over that wall or through that wall. But we're so focused on the big picture that as entrepreneurs, we have to be able to see the details of that inside our business, but also understand the 30,000 foot view above us of where we are and where we're trying to go. And then we have to piece those puzzle pieces together to be able to accomplish it slowly, but surely, but it's no easy task. And trying to do it by yourself is damn near impossible at this point. Like it just not, it's not realistic. The businesses that I've done solo are the ones that are doing the worst. The ones that I've hired people to delegate responsibilities to are the ones that grow the quickest. And that's not by accident. It takes good people and it takes multiple brains and ideas to be able to accomplish the goals that you want to get. Can you give me, uh, and I'm thinking when, whenever you were saying that a game of inches, this, this one tiny little tweak, this one tiny little change, uh, I, I, so many things come to mind that were just like this, half a degree to the right just opened up the floodgates could you give yeah. me an example of something that you 
you're 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 batting, you're in defense, you're weight training, agility, whatever. Something that you realize like, man, if I can just do this one thing and it made a huge impact. Is there anything that stands out to you about that? Yeah, like for me, hitting was always a thing that I was best at and I had the most love and passion for. So I got really obsessed with the details of hitting, especially as I got further in my career in the professional ranks, because the things that separated people from double A baseball to the major leagues, it wasn't dramatic. It was just some consistency and minor details and the guys that just fell in love with those to be able to accomplish it day after day. But let's talk about degrees because you kind of mentioned that. Like for us, we're rotational athletes. What goes into rotation, a lot of it is our pelvis and our hips and the ability to kind of create force and then deliver force in a, a time and timely manner, an efficient manner. It would get to the place where like if I didn't have the certain range of motion in my right hip or my left hip, I wasn't able to fully load my right hip and then unload my right hip into my left hip being a right-handed batter. I would have to alter the degrees of my back foot, my right foot, opening it up a little bit or closing it a little bit. And the ever so slight adjustment of that would change the entire rotational pattern and sequencing of the way that I was able to hit the ball. And you would never think that as a guy that can hit a hundred plus mile an hour fastball and a 90 mile an hour slider, I'd be thinking about degrees of my foot placement because the force is coming from the ground up. But if you can implement some change at the beginning of that rotational pattern, the rest of it is able to just flow freely. So when I was able to find as I was going through my hip injury and then had hip surgery, I learned a lot about how that, that pelvis kind of functions in the rotational pattern. So just the degrees of the ability to be able to adjust something of a foot slightly open or a foot slightly closed or pressure points on your toe, the ball of your foot or the heel. So many minor details where I haven't even gotten to the actual part of my body that hits the baseball. I'm just talking about the dang thing that's stuck on the ground. Like it's, it, it's almost comical at this point how baseball can get so detailed at the highest levels. Well, and I think that that's probably like, I got chills when you were saying that, man, because you're talking about the the angle of your foot and we're thinking, okay, the bat's on my, the bat's in my hands. I'm, I'm rotating my shoulders. I'm rotating my hips. And I'm thinking about all of that, but I challenge anybody right now, wherever you're at, you know, if you're driving, you know, keep driving, but wherever you're at, stand up right now and try to swing without engaging your feet. You'll fall over. Mm. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that, what is the fundamental that we're missing that's keeping us from performing at our highest possible level? Because a lot of people don't think that their foot matters. It's all about the hips and the, and the shoulder rotation. Let's mm -hmm. take a business translation to this. A lot of people think that uh, the tone, if we're doing a sales call, the tone doesn't matter so much. It matters what you say. If you got a great product, people are going to buy it. Well, no. If you treat somebody uh, like they're an idiot, they're not going to buy from you out of spite, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and it's those little fundamentals. People are looking for certainty. They're looking for confidence. They're looking for somebody that cares. Those are the fundamental things that you have to establish before you can run a successful business. That's the angle and openness of your foot. And a lot of times I think we miss that. So that's such a great story, man. Yeah, it's uh, it was almost funny to say. Just because just you're not sure how people are going to accept or understand the message you're sharing. But I feel like it's applicable in a lot of things. And I think that's kind of takes us full circle to the start of this conversation of the reflection. Are you able to reflect on your day? Are you able to consult with different individuals and entrepreneurs that might have gone through similar scenarios? Do you have mentors that you can lean on when you come into those circumstances? Somebody's gone through it and somebody's done it successfully. Sometimes you just got to find the right person that can help you come over that hurdle or, or break through that barrier. And you gotta and you gotta put in the reps. Yeah, man, to that. <laughs> Good deal, man. So Ryan, tell us about what you're doing now and how people can connect with you. So I would say that my professional life post baseball has kind of been a journey. It was real estate investing was the one thing that I was doing a lot of. Once I felt like I got comfortable with that, I realized it was a lot of it was less active income and more passive income, which was great, but it wasn't really helping me pay the bills. Uh, so I started some businesses that were surrounding my two passions, which is baseball and real estate. So right now I have a home maintenance business that helps take care of professional athletes' homes out here in Arizona while they're gone for a season. A lot of these guys will travel from across the country or the world and they're buy homes in Arizona because a lot of spring training complex is here. So they'll buy homes here so they have them for spring or they live here in the off season. And then these multi-million dollar homes just sit vacant for months on end. 
and they don't really have a ton of friends or family in the area to help them because all their friends play baseball and they're gone too. So this was an idea that came from just trial and error with other friends that were kind of going through these. Um, so that's kind of the real estate investing and blending the baseball with that. I do a lot of personal coaching, hitting coaching with anywhere from, you know, nine or 10 year olds to professionals. I work with some minor league guys and I've even worked with major league guys in the off seasons as well. Um, a combination of that is kind of what I'm doing and trying to figure out what my niche is within the entrepreneur space and also find what am I most passionate about and what business can I scale the most is kind of what I'm trial and erring right now through the first two years of retirement for baseball. Good deal, man. And how can people reach out and connect with you? So if you guys want to reach out to me, I'm RC Healy 25 on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm not super active. I'm, I'm on TikTok. I'm very active. It's Ryan, R-Y-O-N dot Healy, H-E-A-L-Y. Um, and then Twitter, I'm not that active on, but Instagram and uh, TikTok, you can find me on there easily. Very good. Hey, we're going to wrap from here. Thanks so much to our guest, Ryan Healy, for coming on and sharing a little bit of wisdom about how to open your foot up just one degree so you can get a couple of extra inches off of that ball there. For those of you who want to connect with him, you can find him on Instagram. One more time. What was it? RC Healy 25. RC Healy 25. For those of you who are on your morning commute, you're in the gym or somewhere out in the field, snap a selfie, tag me at JT, literally show me what you do while you're in the do zone. And one more time, if you're looking to boost your sales, cut your costs and free up your time for higher value tasks, get yourself an Anabot. You can learn more by going to anabots.ai. Hey, that's it. Let's get to work. Mm -hmm.